Last night he had this debate, and he went a little bit further. He's been pulled to the left again and again by Cynthia Nixon, challenging him in this primary that's coming up here in New York in September. And remember, uh, she said some weeks ago that ICE is a terror organization, which seemed like a new low, but I think maybe the governor went even further last night. Yes, yeah, she said she wanted to abolish ICE, and so he's kind of uh, piggybacking on that and saying this about ICE and the administration. New York State is the state that is suing Donald Trump for ripping babies from the arms of their mother. New York State is the state that says we will not cooperate with ICE. They're a bunch of thugs. He politicized ICE. They're a bunch of thugs. We said we will sue them if they violate any criminal laws in the state of New York. Uh, big tough guy. Uh, wonder what it would be like if he had a chance to confront somebody from ICE. Would you sue them and call them thugs? Tom Holman ran that organization as a Fox News contributor. Tom, what's your reaction? You, don't, you know about political rhetoric, but this has got to be personal for you. It is personal, and I'm not going to sit here and call him names. Uh, I did plenty of that last night under my breath. <laughs> but what he's saying, his actions are disgusting. To call a bunch of, to call ICE agents thugs, think about it. These are men and women who are, who are fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. They chose to enforce laws in this country, strap a gun to the hip every day, and put a Kevlar vest on to go out to the community and protect America and protect, and protect the communities. He calls them thugs. Actually, ICE arrests thugs, MS-13 members, gang members, drug traffickers. Uh, we, we arrest over 5,000 criminal aliens off the street of New York that, that many walked out of his sanctuary jails. So rather than calling them thugs, you know, I'm not asking for anybody to give ICE agents a, a, a slack, but a little, a little recognition, a difficult job they do every day. They put their lines on the country for this country every day. They protect New York every day. He ought to be writing a thank you letter rather than calling them names. It's, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Why are they all? Why are so many politicians saying this? Is it to get votes? Because it feels like politics, they're moving so far to the left. And you, know, you have Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. I've been in the state for a long time now. I've never heard him say some of those things. And now he's saying it because the girl that he's, the lady he's running against, Cynthia Nixon, she's saying she wants to abolish ICE. So what's the purpose? Do they really know that. what you guys do? Well, obviously they don't. Because they knew what ICE did, again, they'd be thanking ICE for doing what they do, putting their lives on the line every day for this country. Look, I think it's, it's the end thing for the far left now to say abolish ICE. Look, the, one thing is clear. Governor Cuomo is putting his political ambitions, the same with Ocasio-Cortez, the same with Senator Gillibrand, who's no better. They're putting their political ambitions uh, ahead of public safety and border security. And last night, you know, they debated. They are both fighting who's going to resist President Trump more. The president of the United States, the, the platform is resist the president. I'll tell you something. I've been enforcing laws for 34 years, and I've worked for a lot of presidents. This is a great president, and he's doing the right thing for law enforcement. He's doing the right thing for national security. And we got to remember, there's no true border security without interior enforcement. If you're, happy, if you're lucky enough to get by the Border Patrol or you get caught and ask to see a judge and get released, if there's no interior enforcement that's going to remove these people after, after they have the due process, there's no border security. Then they're going to keep trying to sneak in because they can go to a sanctuary city like New York and be protected by the governor. It's, Tom, to your point, it's worse than just New York. You go down to Texas. We've been talking about some Democratic candidates for various offices down there uh, in these midterms, and some of them are saying illegal bo border crossings. We should take the criminality out of it. It should no longer be an illegal offense to cross the border illegally. I know that's Border Patrol and not ICE, but to your point, this seems insane. No, look, I started my career in Border Patrol. I love the Border Patrol. Another, there's 40,000 American patriots that stand on the front line every day. To decriminalize uh, illegal entry in the United States, what that, that will cause a couple things. Number, number one, you think there's a surge on the border? You decriminalize it, you wait and see what happens on the border. Mm -hmm. the, the, you won't be able to control it. Second of all, we all learned as children that unless there's a consequence or deterrence to, a, to bad behavior, that behavior is going, yep. is going to continue. So it was, it's a right policy, and we need to keep pushing the policy. When you enter this country illegally, it is a crime. And they can't change that. They, de they can't decriminalize it because the exact effect is more people are going to come to this country, which equals this. And one of the candidates in Texas used to be a customs agent. She needs to go back and remember what it's like to be a customs agent because when more people come to this country, they're going to hire more criminal organizations to, to smuggle them to the country, which bankrolls the very criminal organizations that smuggle drugs and smuggle weapons. The same criminal organizations that have murdered Border Patrol agents and special agents in ICE. Right. She's, discuss she's disgusting. All three candidates on that, uh, that are running on this platform are disgusting. It's anti-law enforcement. It's anti-President Trump. It's anti-America. But you are, there's really only 27% of the people want to abolish ICE. That includes Democrats, almost no Republicans. But I just want to keep in mind, if Gavin Newsom becomes governor and he gets his way, 
free health care to illegal immigrants. What will that do at the border as word gets out to Central and South America? It's an enticement. Gavin Newsom, another guy that called me a disgusting name, have at it. Dude, no one's going to bully me and stop talking. I had 80 protesters in my house after I retired. Keep coming. I'm not going to shut up. I've done this for a long time. I'm going to fight for this country. But as far as, you know, the policy of the more, the more, the more they dangle, the sanctuary cities, get benefits, licenses, will protect you from ICE, they entice more people to enter this country, which put border patrol agents ICE agents at danger, but it's going to kill people. Mm. A lot of people die entering this country through the smuggler organization. Women get raped. Children die in the river. Uh, smugglers leave them stranded in the back of a tractor trailer. I stood in the back of the tractor trailer, 19 dead aliens around me years ago with a five-year-old little boy suffocated to death. When you entice them with these things like sanctuary cities and free health care, you are causing more deaths on that border. All right, Tom Holman fired up this morning showing us that there's real stakes here. People's lives uh, are in danger. This is not just hot political rhetoric flying around a gubernatorial right. debate. All right, Tom, oh, thank thanks. You.